to apply a percent style format and use the increase decimal button. Select the range to format cells I4 through I15 in this case. Click the percent style button on the home tab in that numbers group to display the numbers in the selected range as a rounded whole percent. Click the increase decimal button two times to display the numbers in the selected range with two decimal places. I'm actually going to decrease it to two places. Oh, I forgot to click the percent style. There we go. And now I am going to increase it. Well, I'm trying to read and do it all at the same time. So you should have clicked the percent style and then make sure you either use increase or decrease, whichever when you whichever way you go, um, so that you have two decimal places and the percent size. And I'm actually going to delete this bottom one. We don't need that one right there. Okay, conditional formatting. This is one of my favorites. Conditional formatting offers you the ability to automatically change how a cell appears, the font, font color, background fill, and other options based on the value in the cell. Excel offers a variety of commonly used conditional formatting rules along with the ability to create your own custom rules and formatting. To apply conditional formatting, select the range D4 through D12. Click the conditional formatting button to display the conditional formatting menu. Click new rule. You have a lot of options here. You can kind of look through those as you're practicing. Um, we are going to select format only cells that contain. In the edit the rule description area, we're going to make some choices. You can choose a certain cell value, certain dates, blanks, errors, um, things like that. What I want you to select is cell value. And then once I click cell value, I have different options here. We're going to say a cell value greater than, and then we want to find everything greater than 72. So I'm going to type 72 in that rule description box. So now this is the rule. I'm going to, I'm going to select every cell in D4 through D12 that has a cell value greater than 72. Now I need to choose my format. So I select format. Make sure that font is selected if it's not already. Where it says color automatic. And in the color automatic, we're going to change it to um, this white background one. Actually, it's this one, white background one. Okay, so that's what our um, font will be. Next, we're going to look at the fill tab. And the color for this one is going to be this... Um, what is that, a blue? What's that called? I don't know what it's called. So just click that second blue one right there. Once you've clicked that blue color in column nine, row one, for your background color, yeah, feel color, then you click OK. And now you see a display of what it looks like. We've got our white text and our blue background. You can click OK again. And click anywhere to deselect. So what the computer has done is it's looked through all of these numbers for me and it has provided that formatting when the rule was met. 
to change our column width, if you remember from module one, um, you can select multiple column headings at one time and then double click in between any two and it will automatically um, give you the best fit. So go ahead and do that. So you have the best fit in columns A through C. Move to column H, just to the right of column H. And we want to drag it to um, 10.25. Let's see, we want H, D, so I'm gonna hit Control D and then Control and select E. And then I'm gonna drag it to 10.25. This is a review of what we did in module one. And then I can release. Okay. Click column F. Go ahead and drag and get column G in there. Hit control and get J and K. And we're gonna drag those four to 11. Okay. And then you can click anywhere you need to. Um, let's go ahead and do I. We didn't do I. So let's click on I and make that one seven and a half. There we go. Now, remember I told you you could also change the row height. So we're going to point to the boundary below row heading three, which will be right here between three and four. And we're going to drag down until we get to 48. and then release. We're going to next get, um, put our mouse pointer after 14. And we're gonna drag this one to 27. There we go. All right, Excel includes a spelling checker you can use to check a worksheet for spelling errors. The spell checker looks for spelling errors by comparing words on the worksheet against words contained in its standard dictionary. Click cell A3. <clears throat> and then type E-M-P-L-E-M-P-O-L-Y-E-E. -E -E. So we're going to purposely misspell this and then select cell A2. Click review tab on your ribbon. Click your spelling button. Verify that the word highlighted in the suggestion area is correct. That looks good. And then select change. And then select close. So as you are working through Excel, it will not check it and fix it as you're working through there. You actually have to go into review tab and click spell check um, and then spell check that way. Printing the worksheet. Excel allows for a great deal of customization in how a worksheet appears when printed. For example, the margins on the page can be adjusted. A header or footer can be added to each printed page as well. A header is text and graphics that print at the top of each page. Similarly, a footer is text and graphics that print at the bottom of each page. Excel also has the capability to alter the worksheet in page layout view. To change the worksheet's margins, header, and orientation in page layout view. Click the page layout button on your status bar to view the worksheet in page layout view. Display the page layout tab. Click the adjust margins button, which can be found in that page setup group. 
click an arrow in the margins gallery. Now click the center of the header area above the worksheet title and type your name and then press the enter key. Type Chief Financial Officer. This completes the worksheet header. You can select cell A6 or anywhere else to deselect the header. Display the page layout tab. We're going to change the orientation to landscape. Excel provides multiple options for printing a worksheet. Click File on the ribbon to open the Backstage view. Click the Print tab. If necessary, click the Printer Status button in the Print Gallery to display a list of available printers. Now you don't actually have to print today. I want you to practice this so you know how to do it. Go ahead and click the No Scaling button and select Fit on One Page. And then you can print that. It will print just like this. This is a preview of what it looks like. Now, to print a section of the worksheet, let's go back into our document. Select cells A3 to F16. Click File on your ribbon to open back up the backstage view. Click on Print. And where it says print active sheets, now I want you to select print selection. So this is what it looks like before. And now this is what it looks like with just that selection. And you can click print and see what it looks like printed, but this is what it will look like right here. I'm going to go back now, deselect that range, to display the formulas in the worksheet and fit the printout on one page. Press Control and the accent mark to display all your formulas on the page. So now you see, instead of having the results, it shows every single formula that we've created. Click your Page Setup Dialog Box Launcher to display the Page Setup Dialog Box. If necessary, click Landscape in the orientation. Ours is already done. And then click the Fit to one page wide by one page tall if it's not already selected. And then click on Print. And it shows you what you'll be printing. OK, so right now I have that one spot selected. Go back into print, change it off of print selection, and change it to active sheets. And now you have the view of how everything fits onto one page in formula view. So when I print this, it's going to print very small in landscape, and it's going to show me all of the um, formulas that I've used. And if you don't want that anymore, you can just go back to it and again hit that control accent mark and it takes you back to that normal view.